Hey everyone, and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Quick disclaimer before we move on, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read the disclaimer in its entirety before moving on. Channel plug here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to bring you interesting, relevant, and understandable medical education for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. If you want to follow along, we do have a lovely subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of all the videos. Don't forget to hit that like button. And lastly, if you'd like to support us outside of viewing our videos, we have several ways in which you can do that linked in the video description and pinned comment. Stay well, keep learning, and back to the video. All right, and welcome back to the last video in the acid-base disorders series. This is fifth video, and this is going to be a video on acid-base disorders, delta gap, and delta ratio. For those of you just seeing this video, we actually put out an acid-base disorder series. Uh, it's five videos long. There will be some addenda videos coming out over time, but um, a five-video kind of foundational series. If you are just interested in understanding delta gap and delta ratio, starting with this video is fine. But if you need a little more background, this video could be confusing. So definitely go to this video's description. And we recommend starting at video one and going from video one to video five. And by the end, by the end of this video, you should have a really good grasp on the concepts behind acid-based disorders and be able to kind of implement them, whether it's in your tests or understanding or on the wards or what have you. All right, delta gap, delta ratio. So this comes in handy if you have a metabolic acidosis with an anion gap. So as we talked about in the last video, if you have a metabolic acidosis, metabolic acidosis, the next thing you want to do is calculate if there is an anion gap. If there is an anion gap, then what you want to do is this, the delta gap or the delta ratio. Um, we'll just put delta. The verbiage here can get confusing. People say delta gap. People say the delta delta. People say the delta ratio. All of those are looking at the same thing, but they just look at it using slightly different equations. All right, but delta delta, delta gap, delta ratio, all that is getting to the same kind of... Um, working to get to the same conclusion, but just doing it in different ways. And we'll go over some of that. So what this delta gap does is it determines if there could be a combined acid-base disorder. So essentially it can determine if there is a combined non-anion gap metabolic acidosis with a high anion gap metabolic acidosis or even if there's a metabolic acidosis with a metabolic alkalosis. And this is really important when you're thinking about what is causing the acid-base disorder in a patient. You need to know if there's some of these combined disorders. This is some advanced acid-base stuff. Uh, this would be very impressive, you know, to do on the wards and things like that. Um, and it also is something that is commonly tested on. So the equation for the delta gap, the first way we're going to look at this, is the delta gap equals the delta anion gap minus the delta bicarbonate gap. And what this equates to is the actual anion gap, so this is what the anion gap is for that patient, minus 12, because this is the normal NL normal anion gap. And it's going to be minus the bicarbonate, being 24, this is just a normal bicarbonate, minus the actual bicarbonate. Right? So if we write this out, the delta gap equals the actual anion gap minus 12, which is just a normal anion gap, minus normal bicarbonate, which is 14, subtracted actual bicarbonate. And this is the bicarbonate that you would get off your basic metabolic panel. This is the anion gap that you'd get off your basic metabolic panel. So these two are kind of what is going on in the patient, right? Whereas these two are just kind of the normal values. And that will give you a number. All right. Sometimes that number will be negative 
and sometimes it will be positive. And how we interpret that is below. So what we're going to do is we're going to write the equation right here so we can kind of remember it. dg delta gap equals the delta anion gap subtracted by the delta bicarbonate level. And what that equates to is your the actual patient's anion gap minus 12, which is just a normal anion gap, minus 24, a normal bicarbonate, subtracted by the patient's bicarbonate. All right? So if the delta gap is less than 1, which means, you know, is if it is even negative, what that is telling you is there is, we're just going to highlight this for when we start writing on this, um, what that is telling you is that there's a concurrent non-anion gap metabolic acidosis in addition to the high anion gap metabolic acidosis, right? Because you only do the delta-delta if it is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. And why that makes sense is in this equation. We talked about in the last video that a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, a HAGMA, means that there is an extra acidic compound floating around, lactate, you know, keto acids, uh, formic acid. Whereas if you are a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis, that just means you are losing bicarbonate. So if the delta gap is less than 1, what that essentially means is your bicarbonate value is lower than it should be if it were a pure anion gap metabolic acidosis, right? Because the anion gap equals sodium minus chloride plus bicarb. So if it is a pure high, we'll put HAGMA here just for the sake, remember high anion gap metabolic acidosis is equivalent in terminology to an anion gap metabolic acidosis. These are kind of the same thing, they're just displayed differently. Um, so if the delta gap is less than 1, it means that this bicarbonate value is much lower, right? Because you'd say 24 minus 20, and then subtracting that would get you something normal. Is 24 minus 12 is going to give you a higher number here, which is going to make this more negative. And what it's saying is that the anion gap being seen is not representative of what the bicarbonate should be if it was just a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So you have a non-anion gap component because you're losing more bicarbonate than you should if it was a pure high anion gap metabolic acidosis. All right. If the delta gap is 1 to 2, that is just a pure, simple, high anion gap metabolic acidosis. That is what the delta gap should be if the anion gap is explained by the change in bicarb, which is explained by the high anion gap metabolic acidosis. If the delta gap is greater than 2, it suggests a mixed metabolic alkalosis because the bicarb is higher than it should be if it were just a high anion gap Oh, another lag. A high anion gap metabolic acidosis, a HAGMA. All right? And that makes sense in this equation, right? If the delta gap is high, it means that this minus this is higher. So this is um, um, 24 minus a higher bicarb, making this less, so then the total is going to be higher. You know, that's just simple math. We probably don't need to explain that. Um, but it essentially is suggesting that the bicarbonate is higher than it should be, and the bicarbonate goes up, as we've talked about in a handful of the previous videos, in metabolic alkalosis. Does that make sense? Hopefully spelling it out this way explains why the delta gap is certain ways, and you'll remember it a little better. So it's all about this area of the equation here. And we'll scroll up so you can see it a little better. This area here, it's all about the bicarb level. And if that bicarbonate level is appropriate for just a pure high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Because as we talked about, repetition, 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 you only do the delta gap if you have a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Otherwise, you do not do it.
So if you have a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, you do the delta-delta, and either the bicarbonate value is appropriate, which will give you a delta gap of 1 to 2, and it's just that high anion gap metabolic acidosis, or the bicarbonate is inappropriate. If that bicarbonate is inappropriately low, as we know, that would be suggestive of a concurrent normal anion gap metabolic acidosis in addition to the high anion gap metabolic acidosis because the bicarbonate is lower than it should be, your delta gap is too low, so you have this combined disorder. Whereas if the delta gap is too high, right, that suggests that this part of the um, uh, equation, right, you have too much bicarbonate, you get more bicarbonate in a metabolic alkalosis, and thus you have a combined high anion gap metabolic acidosis plus a metabolic alkalosis. So it's all about this part of the equation and just how the bicarbonate level changes this part of the equation and thus changes the delta gap. Another way to think about this is the delta ratio you'll hear thrown around. So the delta ratio tells you the exact same thing, right? It tells you the exact same thing as the delta gap. It's just displayed in a different way. So instead of doing subtraction, you do division. So the delta ratio is the change in anion gap divided by the change in bicarb. And just like the delta gap, the delta ratio is the measured anion gap minus 12 divided by 24 minus the measured bicarb, right? This is the normal anion gap. This is the, a normal anion gap. And this is the patient's anion gap. This is the patient's bicarbonate. So if we scroll back up, it's literally the exact same equation as the delta gap, except the delta ratio divides these two things rather than subtracts them. All right? So normal anion gap 12, normal bicarb 24, like we talked about. Change in anion gap, change in bicarb is this, which we talked about, right? We just wrote it out in two different ways. So then they have delta ratio. We have delta ratio meanings depending on what the ratio is. So if the ratio is less than 0.4, it means that there is a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis, all right? Which essentially means you didn't need to do the delta ratio in the first place because you should have already known that it was a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. So, you know, people put this in here, but we tend to cross it out because you shouldn't be doing the delta ratio if it's a non anion gap metabolic acidosis to start with because you would just know that based upon your initial anion gap calculation. Whereas these three are the equivalent to, right, we're scrolling up, are the equivalent to these three. So either you have a combined high anion gap and non anion gap, you have a just high anion gap, or you have a high anion gap with a metabolic alkalosis. Same thing down here. So if it's 0.4 to 0.8, you have a mixed high anion gap metabolic acidosis plus a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis, which essentially just means that, right, like we talked about, your measure bicarbonate is lower than it should be because you're losing bicarbonate because you have this combined non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. And as we talked about in video four, our last video, in non-anion gap metabolic acidosis, you lose bicarb, which makes this ratio lowest. If the ratio is 0.8 to 2, it just means it's normal. Your anion gap and bicarb are where they should be for a high anion gap. If the ratio is high, it means you have more, more bicarb than you should. So you have a combined metabolic alkalosis with your high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So the delta ratio is just another way to think about the delta delta. So you can have a delta, you can do the delta gap, you can do the delta ratio, whichever one you'd like to do is fine. Both get to the same end point. All right. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, hopefully that made sense. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Definitely check out our other acid base videos in the series. We're also going to put all them together into one kind of massive video uh, just to make it easier for people to, to go through if they want to just watch them all in series. Um, otherwise, subscribe, hit the bell button, follow along, all that good stuff. Check out our other content. Uh, we appreciate you all. Stay well, keep learning, and we will see you next time.